everyone and welcome to About Town. I'm Susan Stevens. Thanks so much for joining us for highlights from this year's Irving Trivia Contest, the 2023 High School Art Show, and an African American cookbook featured in Page Turners. We'll also get the details on the return of the Irving Heritage Society Fish Fry and Fusion, celebrating Irving's diversity. And in feature flicks, I have a review of the highly anticipated Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Irving ISD sure has some creative and artistic talents in our school. And what better way to see those talents than on display at the annual high school art exhibition. I got a chance to see the students' beautiful artwork and speak with some of the artists. The annual Irving ISD High School Art Show brought out friends and family to see the different art projects students have worked on all year. We have stuff from paintings, drawings, mixed media. We have sculptures from ceramics to plaster gauze, paper mache. We have all kinds of stuff going on in here. I worked on this piece for about over 50 hours and inking itself took more than six hours. It uh, took a very long time, obviously. Um, and I did it with Copic markers and uh, inking pens and colored pencils. Our main assignment was to um, have something like kind of like 3D. We we're supposed to use like our school's laser cutter. But I, I, ba I barely used it, but I wanted to do something different. And so I wanted to make it like kind of pop out in 3D. And so that's where I went with it. Um, it took a long time to make, I'm not gonna lie. This exhibition is a chance for students to share their craft with the city. I want to show people my representation of life and my perspective on it because everyone has a unique perspective. It's just whether they're able to show it in whichever way they choose. I can express myself the way I want to and get across my message or whatever I'm trying to do. And for Isabella and Jason, it's also a chance for their moms to see their hard work on display. Every time she's here, she always just on her phone sending it to everybody she knows. I don't know why, but it's very like, it just puts a smile on my face. She absolutely loved it and she kept checking in on me while I spent days at my desk working on it. So it means a lot to me that she gets to see it. One of the many reasons this showcase is beneficial for both the community and Irving ISD students. How well do you know Irving? Well, teams of one to four participated in the annual Irving Trivia Contest to test their knowledge of our beloved city. Robert Sheik has the story. Everything there is to know about Irving. What was MacArthur Boulevard originally called? In the form of a question. Which Irving mayor presided over the 2003 centennial? Teams of Irving intellects gathered for this unique trivia contest with only one subject, Irving at the Irving Archives and Museum. It's a collaboration with several organizations, the Irving Black Arts Council, the library, the school district, the Heritage Society, the city of Irving in general. Uh, I think it's a wonderful collaboration and I think we all learn and appreciate our city and that's one of the reasons we work well together. Let's take a look at some of these answers. William Square, Ben Carpenter, so many Irving icons. Wait. Kathy Whiteman? That can't be right. Who hosts ICTN's About Town? You say. Kathy Whiteman. I think the question we all want to know, who's writing these questions? Is Kathy writing these questions? She'd be a good source, wouldn't she? Kathy can likely tell you this contest began 16 years ago to commemorate the 225th birthday of Washington Irving as part of the Irving Heritage Society's Celebrating Irving, the City in the Man event. The champions this year were the Talking Dead, a team that includes representatives from Sour Cemetery. If we clean a headstone or repair a headstone, I go and find out about that person, and a lot of times I have to refer to the Irving history books and other books and publications. And we were up against a lot of people who know a lot of things about Irving and work for Irving, and we're just very surprised that, that we were able to uh, get the win this year, 2023. Win in the history books that just might become a trivia question one day. Robert Sheik for About Town. Here's a trivia question for you. Where can you get an amazing fish dinner and have cake too? It's another event brought to us by the Irving Heritage Society. The return of their annual fish fry. Diane Mannon and David Cole are here to give us all the details. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. 
Uh, now, Diane, can you tell us about uh, the fish fry and where the proceeds are going to? Okay, this is our main uh, fundraising effort every year to, for just to keep the Heritage Society afloat and all of our educational efforts and anything else that we do. We've not had a fish fry in three years because of COVID. So we're hoping everybody will be really hungry from some good, good catfish and other food that David will talk about in a minute. Uh, but, but the event is on Friday, May the 12th uh, from five to seven at Heritage Park. We're actually on the street in front of Heritage Park. Uh, we set up, it's a good time to come and visit, reacquaint yourself with people you haven't seen since the last fish fry three years before, or just enjoy a nice evening out. Yeah, and like you mentioned, there is gonna be a lot of great food. So David, can you tell us what will be served there? Yeah, so we're bringing back, the, we're putting the team back together. So former mayor, Marvin Randall, and his son, Randy, and their guys, always did the fish fry. So we got them to come back and they're gonna do their specialties, which is catfish, hush puppies, coleslaw. They also do fried green tomatoes, which are normally sliced by Councilman Oscar Ward. And they do fried spam and French fries and all kinds of stuff. And we have cakes for the cake auction. Yeah, sounds delicious. And, and tickets are about our $17.50 in advance. They'll be $22.50 at the door. We had to go up on our prices this year because everything else has gone up. And it is a fundraiser after all. But, right. Uh, and tickets are available at the Monkey Junkie at 142 West Irving Boulevard at Hastings at the Mustang Museum when it is open and also from any of the board members. And you can also go to irvingheritage.com and buy them online if you want to pay with a credit card. That's perfect. So folks, you heard it here. The Irving Heritage Society Fish Fry is going to be Friday, May 12th from 5 to 7 p.m. at 217 South Main Street next to Heritage Park. For tickets, visit irvingheritage.com. Just the title is intriguing. Jubilee, recipes from two centuries of African-American cooking. And it's the first cookbook featured in Page Turners. Hello and welcome to another edition of Irving Public Library's Page Turners. I'm your host, Mandy Aguilar, and this month we're talking to Tulip Majumdar, teen librarian at West Irving Library. Thanks for being here, Tulip. I'm so happy to be here and I brought a cookbook today. That is a first for Page Turners. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, it's called Jubilee Recipes from Two Centuries of African American Cooking by Tony Tipton Martin. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the author? Yes, she is a chef, an activist, a grassroots organizer who researched two centuries of um, African American cooking. Um, so this book combines updated recipes and those original classics. Have you made any of the recipes? I have. My favorite one is by far the Jamaican jerk ribs with pineapple salsa. It's this perfect balance of sweetness and acidity. It's super flavorful and I'm not the best cook, but it's foolproof for beginners. Oh, excellent. Okay. What about a recipe you think everybody should try? Definitely the Southern pecan pie. So it'll be perfect for the holidays. Um, it's laced with whiskey or rum. And I don't like super, super sweet things, but that whiskey or rum, if you choose to add it, really cuts down that sweetness. Well, it looks amazing. And I will give it a shot and let you know how it turns out. Um, anything else you'd like to share about Jubilee? This book is such a celebration of African-American life and culture. It honors the hands that made and created these recipes that we all consider, you know, American cuisine today. Um, it, from the enslaved black chefs to chefs who are working for the black elite, it just, it runs the gamut. There's a old recipe in here from 1881 for okra gumbo. And it's like, it's so cool to see that history in here and have that be honored. Well, thank you for coming and sharing this wonderful cookbook with us. I will add it to my shelf right away. And thanks everyone at home for joining us. We will see you again next month. You can check out a copy of Jubilee Recipes from Two Centuries of African American Cooking at any Irving Public Library branch. Learn more at cityofirving.org slash library. Of course, food is a great way to celebrate the many cultures of Irving, but when you add music and dancing to the mix, you have fusion. Megan Gordon and Hannah James from the city of Irving join me to talk about the festivities at this year's event. Welcome guys, thanks so much for being here with us. Thanks for having us back. 
So Megan, for those who don't know what fusion is, can you tell us about the day? So fusion is a combination of a bunch of events and activities that we all love, music, food, dance, um, and it's really highlighting the different diverse cultures of Irving itself, all kind of melded into a fun event for families of all ages. That's great, yeah, it's wonderful. And um, Hannah, what can everyone look forward to? So we have a full day, full schedule, packed house um, from 12 to 6 at Heritage Park. There is a whole schedule full of different bands. Um, we have a steel drums band. We have a couple different dance groups from hula dances to um, a mariachi band, all kinds of things. Um, so there's a whole full schedule happening. And then we also have um, many different food vendors and artisan vendors and community groups from all around Irving and the surrounding cities with all kinds of different fun things to buy and try and, and all of that. We have face painters and calligraphy and um, photo ops and all kinds of things. Anything that you could ever want to do um, to celebrate the different cultures of Irving. Yeah, there's so much. It's a lot of fun <laughs> and, and I love food, but I really do think this is such an important event. I think it's really important to celebrate the diversity that we have here. Why do you think it's important? Um, I think um, one super unique thing about Irving is how diverse our zip code is. We have one of the most diverse zip codes in the nation, and it's important to highlight that. I think this event does a great job of bringing that awareness to the community and showing how great it is to live in the city of Irving. Yeah, absolutely. No, it sounds great. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for being here. And uh, folks, Fusion is Saturday, May 20th from noon to 6 p.m. at Heritage Park. For more details, visit cityofirving.org. I know I've been saying since Endgame and Spider-Man No Way Home, Marvel has cranked out some underwhelming sequels. So that put a lot of pressure on the third installment of the beloved Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. Well, I'm so happy to say that Volume 3 is a hit and a solid ending to a fantastic trilogy. It seems director James Gunn wanted to be discreet with the plot, so I won't give too much away. In this film, the Guardians are looking a little bit different. Peter is still reeling from his loss of Gamora, and the team is feeling a bit disjointed. But when one of their own is in danger, they must all work together to protect him and save the world from a villain who's looking to create what he defines as the perfect society. It's kind of hard not to fall in love with this endearing band of misfits. We have grown to care for them, even at their worst. Out of all the Marvel characters, this group has always felt the most like family because they are each other's chosen one. That bond is beautifully showcased in Volume 3. We get to see the backstory of one of the tougher characters, Rocket, that will have you reaching for the tissues. It is so well told and not only will it explain his attitude, but why his family with the Guardians means so much. The entire cast lands the comedy and conveys the heart of the story brilliantly. And even with a runtime of two and a half hours, the film moves quickly thanks to an engaging plot, thrilling action sequences, and as always, a stellar soundtrack. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is a visually stunning, perfect blend of humor, emotion, and fun. I highly recommend audiences experience this film in theaters. That beautiful sky. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is currently playing at AMC Irving Mall and the Alamo Draft House Las Cleanas. Step into spring with some fun events. Levi Gomez, our man about town, has some great suggestions. Hi everyone, Levi here. Come participate in a Q&A and book signing with author of Interior Chinatown, Charles Yu, brought to you by the NEA Big Read Program. Interior Chinatown won the 2020 National Book Award. The event is May 13th at 7 p.m. here at the Irving Arts Center. Come check out the Las Colinas Symphony Orchestra season finale here at Carpenter Hall. It'll feature concert pianist Albert Kano Smith. The event is May 13th at 7.30 p.m. Come check out the music of Elton John and Billy Joel starring Michael Cavanaugh. Michael is a Tony and Grammy Award nominated performer. The event is May 18th at 7.30 here at Carpenter Hall. Presented by Irving Events, Fusion celebrating Irving's diversity. It's a day of live music, dance, and food representing many cultures in the city. The event is May 20th from noon to 6 p.m. here at Heritage Park. 
presented by gospel songwriter Kirk Franklin is the Exodus Music and Arts Festival. It's a two-day festival featuring Tamala Mann, Yolanda Adams, and more. The show's May 20th at the Pavilion. Doors open at 4 p.m. Dermot Kennedy is stopping by Irving for his North American tour for his second studio album, Sonder. He's an Irish singer and songwriter. The show is May 23rd at the Pavilion. Doors open at 6 p.m. For more events about town, check out our local arts calendar at cityofirving.org 536. And that wraps up this edition of About Town. Thanks for joining us. Please be sure to tune in next time for highlights from the Senior Portfolio Show, the NEA Big Read, where we meet author Charles Yu, and we visit the Irving location of one of my favorite sweet treats, Nothing Bunt Cakes. As always, we love to hear your feedback. Tell us about events going on around the community, people we should profile, or stories you'd like to see on the show. You can email us at ictn at cityofirving.org or connect with us on social media. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. We'll leave you tonight with Momentum Dance Company's story ballet, Alice in Wonderland. For About Town, I'm Susan Stevens. Have a great evening. Bye.